What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are going to do Malbuster or Malware Buster. In this room we are going to analyze multiple malware samples. But of course we're not going to use dynamic analysis. We're going to use static analysis. As you know, in malware analysis we have got two kinds of malware analysis. The first one is static where we go over the file information, MD5, the file uh, the executable type whether it is 32 64 and we take a peek look at the portable executable headers we try to find out or extract the functions the imports the dlls and we can also submit the malware to online malware uh, analysis platforms in dynamic analysis we interact with the malware we open the malware we see the network connections the register modifications all of the thing that the malware is doing in or uh, sorry the malware is doing live so this video we're going to focus on static analysis so we're given uh, 10 malware samples or five and you have the option to choose remnux or to choose flare vm if you want to use the flare vm it's a windows machine you can deploy it in the first task if you want to use remnux as i wanted to do you can deploy the machine attached to task 2 so let's get started okay so this is the machine Remnux and as you can see all the samples are stored under the samples directory in desktop so we have four malware samples so let's first open the command line and maximize the font for you guys Okay, let's see the desktop samples. Okay, so these are the samples. Okay, so we're going to go, as I told you guys, we're going to use static analysis, some static analysis tools, and we're going to dissect the portable executable headers. At the same time, we're going to get the help of online tools. So the first question is, based on the architecture of the binary, is Malbuster 1? is a 32 or 64 bit application so that's the first thing you would do when you want to statically analyze a malware you would first understand what type of file it is or what type of binary it is so for that we use the tool file and we name the malware so as you can see it is portable executable 32 so the 32 bit binary that's the answer what's the md5 hash of malbuster 1 Extracting the MD5 hash for the malware is usable, uh, sorry, is important for two purposes. The first one, if you want to submit the hash to online tools or threat hunting platforms. And the second one, if you want to uh, create a case of, oh, sorry, a chain of custody. So in chain of custody, we want to get the uh, original MD5 hash of the malware. We store it somewhere and then have it in a secure place. And then we analyze the malware so that at the end after the analysis the hashes are not altered or we make sure that the file isn't altered by comparing the hashes before and after the analysis this is very important if you are doing forensic 25 sum malbuster1 and the 5 sum malbuster1 and this is the md5 hash using the hash what's the number of detections of malbuster underscore one in virus total so here you go we use an online platform for analyzing malwares so we take in the hash use the search tab and we submit the file the, the hash okay so we got around 51 detections 51 detections it means 51 antivirus vendors have flagged the malware so we got 51 detections Based on virus total detection, what's the malware signature of malware buster underscore two? According to Avira, so we have to go back here and use MD5 sum, calculate the MD5 sum of the second malware sample. Happens to be malware buster underscore two. This is the MD5 sum. I'm gonna have this copied. Head over to 
Empire's Total, click on Search tab and paste in the hash. So according to Avira, this is the malware signature. And if you want to get details about the signature, you can just Google it. That's the signature. Malbuster2 imports the function underscore core exec main. That's the, one of the functions that it imports. From which DLL file does it import this function? So normally, executable files import functions using the DLLs. So let's we can we can find this using the virus total as well. So we go to details, we scroll the way down, and we head over to sections imports. In the imports, we can pin down all of the DLLs used by the malware. In the case of malbuster underscore two, we have only one and it imports the this function and normally we get here a list of the functions that the DLL imports in the case at hand we have only one function uh, mentioned at the question so this is the DLL that imported this function based on the vs underscore version underscore info header so here we pivot to the portable executable header we have to use a tool to analyze the portable executable headers of malbuster2 so we head back to the command line and we use pe3 malbuster2 pe3 is a tool that dissects all the portable executable headers so to find the vs version info we have to uh, locate the dos, DOS header and in here, as you can see, we have the rise sections, including information that we can extract using the ND5 and the file tool. Yet, we can use the PE tree here or portable executable tree to get all of these data, as you can see here under the DOS header. And we take this like that, collapse this. And here we have all the rise sections we need. So this is the VS underscore version info. And here we can see, locate the original file name internal name or you can check out the original file name that's the original file name or the first name of the file when it was created as you can see the entropy is so high like the how random is the file or the binary so when the randomness is high it means there is a likely there's a high chance that the file is malware so this is the original file name Using the hash of the Malbuster 3, what's its malware signature based on AppUseCH? So we head back to the command line, we close this tool, and we use md5sum malbuster underscore 3. So we have this copied. Okay, and we head over to AppUseCH. Abuse CH is a suit of threat hunting platforms. As you can see, we have SSL blacklist. We can check for blacklisted SSLs or SSL, cert SSL certificates used by malware authors. Fudo Tracker, Malware Bazaar, UR URL House, Threat Fox, Yara, IFY for IR rules. So, in the task at hand, we're going to check out Malware Bazaar. So, Malware Bazaar, we have the option to browse the existing samples. And to use the MD5 sum, we're gonna use we're gonna follow the syntax as you can see. We have MD5 and colon, and then we put in the MD5, MD5 colon. So we search for this binary or malware that is associated with this hash. Search and we got one hit. As you can see, it's a DLL and this is a signature, it's a trick bot. So this is the answer. Next, using the hash of Malbuster 4, what is its malware signature based on AppUseCH? So again, 4. And back here, MD5. It is ZLoader. What is the message found in the DOS stub? Of malbuster those stop is also a header section <laughs> so you have to get back to p3 those stop 
and here we see the message section it says this soul from cannot be run in those mode malbuster 4 imports the function shell execute a from which dll file does it import this function so we saw that virus total can give us the answer for this so we head back to virus total and we paste in the hash for malbuster 4 we go to details we locate the dll section these are the dlls imported by the binary and each one of these dlls imports its own functions we're looking for shell execute a so it's pretty obvious we have to check first shell 32.dll and luckily for us it has the function we're looking for using kappa kappa is a tool to give us a quick um, output or a quick uh, let me say view of the capabilities used by our capabilities owned by the binary including its techniques according to the MITRE ATT and CK so it's good to have this in our arsenal if you want to statically analyze the malware and quickly get results about what it's doing or the behavior how many anti-VM instructions were identified with malwarser underscore one so we close this one kappa mal one now we should get a quick analysis on malbuster one and its capabilities techniques and procedures according to ADT and ck or the mitre framework the threat hunting platform let's see so we are required to find out what are or how many anti-vm instructions okay let's go over the sections so first we get basic information about the file md5 sha has the format the architecture and it will be as you can see att and ck tactic so this is the tactic or the main behavior of the malware according to the mitre ADT and ck framework so according to the framework the behavior is categorized under defense evasion and this is a technique. So the technique says obfuscated files or information, virtualization, sandbox evasion. So this malware is or was specifically designed to evade sandbox or virtualization. So it's not going to be, uh, it's, there's high chance if you run this on a virtual machine, it's going to evade it. MPC objective, MPC behavior. As you can see, we have again anti behavior analysis, virtual machine detection. And under all of that, we have three techniques or three instructions. Generate pseudo random sequence. All of these pseudo sequences or random pseudo sequences are used to confuse the virtual machine and, uh, of course, try to uh, sneak into the host OS or the yeah host OS. So we have three. Using Kappa, which binary can lock keystrokes? So what you have to do here, guys, you have to use Kappa for every single malware. Sa I just closed it. OK, sorry. You have to use Kappa for every single malware sample to be able to find the answer. So CD desktop again. I hate this. Samples. Kappa. So run Kappa or every single one of these and check out what are the capabilities here. The question is, what binary can lock keystrokes? The answer is underscore 3, and this is the reason. So kappa mal underscore 3. If you run kappa on this, What was the next one? Using Kappa again, what's the MITRE ID of the discovery technique used by... We have to use Kappa again. Obviously, it takes some time, so we're going to waste time on this. Which binary contains a string God mode? Let's answer this question. So, new tab. Again, so we have to use strings 
tool to be able to extract the strings god mode so on which malware again the same methodology run strings on all of the samples the answer is underscore 2 why because if you run strings on malbuster2 and use a grip god mode As you can see, we have the string God mode in Malbuster 2. However, if we try it on Malbuster 1, we didn't get any results. If we try on Malbuster 3, we don't get any results. So the answer is underscore 2. Which binary contains the string? The same methodology. Let's copy the string and run the strings on all of the samples. No hits on Malbuster 3. Let's try again to we'll go back to 1. And we got one hit on, on the first sample. So this is the answer. Let's go back to Kappa. Okay, so Kappa is finished. Let's take a look at the capabilities. Okay, so according to the MITRE framework, these are the tactics used. Collection, defensive agent, discovery, and execution. And one of the tactics, it is collection. The technique is input capture, which refers to key logging. So that's the answer for this question. Using Kappa, what's the MITRE ID of the discovery technique used by Balbuster 4? The same guys run Kappa on this one. And to be able to extract the MITRE ID, you have to locate the technique itself. So the technique here is, let's see. Let me run this. Yeah, before I run this, as you can see, we have the technique id of every as you can see tactic so for input capture this is the id for of a files this is the mitre id do the same for malbuster 4 and you will get this so that was it guys i hope you liked the video and i will see you later